I'm Bruce Howes. I'm the president of Community Light and Sound. We're located in Chester, Pennsylvania. We're designers and manufacturers of professional sound reinforcement loudspeakers. Now you see some examples of the products here. These are loudspeakers which are used for professional public address applications. Would range anywhere from speakers that would be used by uh, bands and musical groups up to speaker systems that would be used in large stadiums, auditoriums, churches, auto racetracks, any place that requires high quality, full range, very clear, very intelligible sound. Here, here we are in the wood shop. This is obviously where the cabinets begin, starting out with, with raw materials and sheet form. This is MDF, medium density fiberboard. We use a variety of different materials in our cabinets. The wood is held down on that machine by vacuum. It's located by pins, held down by vacuum. A lot of what's Sheen on these uh, these two more Modellis are, are face plates. They're the, the front of a speaker, front of a speaker cabinet which holds the the woofer and the, the mid-range and high frequency section. After the all the wood parts are machined. They're put together in kits. Kits would be all the parts to build a cabinet or a multiple of cabinets. Or you can see some of them, some of them over here. In these plastic transportable bins. This is a kit for a stage monitor. The first step in, in assembling the cabinet, parts are taken from the wood kit, get some amount of pre-finishing, some amount of edge sanding, some amount of filling of voids. Some of that is done before the cabinet's actually made because it's more practical to do it with the parts in the flat than it is to do it on the assembled cabinet. One of the real keys to getting a good paint finish on a cabinet is the preparation of the cabinet and a lot of work goes into that. Probably fully half the work in constructing a cabinet is preparation for paint. Here's the paint booth. There you see the, uh, the drying room and uh, just the conveyor just making a big U through the drying room. product comes out here. Each one of these gets three or four coats of paint. First coat is a primer. When the, the prime cabinets come out, they're hand sanded while on the conveyor. They're not taken off the conveyor and the conveyor isn't stopped. The conveyor is moving very slowly. It's uh, about six feet a minute. There you can see finished painted cabinets going downstairs to the fourth floor to get loaded. Going into our rather spacious freight elevator, which is certainly necessary to make a five-story building work. We are absolutely dependent on that elevator. That thing right there, that orange thing, is a mold for a fiberglass horn. That's actually the low-frequency mold from an R2 starts in that form. The part has been taken off that mold. That mold will be clean, have some mold release applied to it. Next step is that the mold will be gel coated. Gel coating is the application of a thickened polyester resin. Most of the, the products that we make are, are black hence black gel coat. That is a gel coated mold. In other words, that mold underneath there is orange, just like the, the one we were looking at down there. 
here you see a large number of moles that are gel coated. They're waiting to be laminated. That's the next step in the fiberglass process. Here you see another part being laminated. That's the low frequency section for an R2, which is the mold that we saw when we first came into the glass shop, the mold that wasn't gel coated. You can see very easily what he's doing, that he's, he's applied fiberglass material, he's rolling it down. The sort of white patches that you see under there are air. And a lot of what he's doing is simply rolling out that air. This is the third floor. This is where we manufacture all of our carpet covered cabinets. If you remember, we were looking at cabinets in the demo room. Some of them were, had painted finishes and some of them were carpeted. This is where all the carpeted cabinets are made. Starts just like the painted cabinet with a wood kit from the wood shop across the street. These systems are built on, these cabinets are built on fixtures. And as you see going on here, stapled together with air staples, is product just moving down, moving down an assembly line. That cabinet that he just put together will probably, certainly by midday tomorrow, that cabinet will be in a box and ready to be shipped. This is where the, the carpeting process starts initial wrap is put around the cabinet. Then they're, they're moved on to the next station. Where front corners are installed, the, the carpet is wrapped around the face of the cabinet. The strips are put in that later on will support the grill. Each system has its own specific crossover. The design of a crossover is very important in the performance of a speaker system. So each speaker, just like it has its separate cabinet design and separate horn design, will also have its separate crossover design. We're in the driver shop now. This is where we manufacture our compression drivers. What you see going on here is a diaphragm being aligned in a driver. The tone that you're hearing is a tone that is at the mechanical resonant frequency of the driver. And what John is doing is adjusting, precisely locating the diaphragm assembly with set screws on the, on the side, precisely centering the voice coil in the magnetic gap. What the tone does is enable him to, uh, that, that instrument that, that is generating the tone also measures the current draw of the driver while it's receiving that tone and he's able to adjust it to, to be exactly centered. Inside that enclosure there's a microphone that's reading the output of the speaker. When you hear the tone starting out at high frequencies and going down to low frequencies, that is tone spanning the entire operating range of the speaker. And what the, the, the microphone is doing in there is measuring the output of the speaker as compared to a standard curve. In other words, for each product, when the product comes up, he keys into the system what the product is. So the system knows what it's testing. And there is a pass-fail curve, a, a range of acceptability for each product.